Hey. 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 It's been a while. Sorry, hey. everybody. Yeah. We're doing so. this doing this one with my feet up. Yeah, kicking back. Yeah, on your furniture. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, so there's another Ask BP, everybody. Another obviously. installment of yeah. Ask BP. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. So what you do is you tweet your questions to at the pretension on Twitter um, when I ask for them because uh, otherwise I'll forget even if it's a good question. I'll only remember if they're all in the same place. Mm-hmm. So we do three or four. Um, what's your take on the filmography of Matt Frewer? <laughs> Says at they use tools. Uh, uh, he's great. Pro. Yeah. I, I like him a lot. Moving on. At D. Berga asks, quest, uh, who is the better filmmaker, Del Toro, Cuaron, or Inaritu? Uh If the question was who, uh, whom do I prefer, yeah. I would say Del Toro. But as far as who's the better filmmaker, I'd say I'd be inclined to say it's a tie between... Between Del Toro and Cuaron. Yeah. The Inaritu has sort of... Uh, uh, we I think we've seen the extent of his bag of tricks. Yeah. Uh, um, but if the question is who do we prefer, Tyler is a Del Toro man. I'm an Alfonso Cuaron man. As my, I love Del Toro, but just the Itamama Tambien, Harry Potter three, and Children of Men mm. uh, just puts it over the over the top for me. Yeah, and the and Cuaron, I really like him as well. But I think the the stories that he tells and and the way that that uh, Del Toro, the way he tells them, uh, is more appealing to me. Okay. At Oh, I should have I should have figured out how to read these first. At the Orkley Kid asks, which so called classics, according to either film critics or the geek community, don't you like or maybe just don't get? Um, and I, I I'll just get out of the way. I've said before on the show that uh I think the hustler is a little um uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Overwrought. Overwrought is a good word. It's uh, I, I can kind of I feel like I can feel everybody involved kind of sweating it out <laughs> as they're making it. I enjoy The Hustler myself uh, I because I, I really enjoy uh, a lot of the performances. Uh, but the one that for some reason I've never really responded to is uh, The African Queen. I like... Uh, We're done. Oh, jeez. I did not expect that, everybody. <laughs> no, you didn't. Um, the African Queen. I, I You know what? Because I was looking at you in here, I thought like all of a sudden there was a B, and because you're like, <laughs> oh jeez, um, no, uh, yeah, the African Queen. I, I like it's John a- Huston. I like Humphrey Bogart. I like uh, Catherine Hepburn. And yet for some reason it never gelled for me. I just never. I, I just don't enjoy it. I think I understand why it's a good movie, but I never really, never really liked, never really bought their relationship, and I never really liked the movie. Sorry, everybody. It's it's such a great movie. It's so, <laughs> uh, from a from a technical standpoint as well. I mean, mm. it's so much of it is shot on location, and the fact that he still manages to make a good movie uh, in difficult circumstances is uh, very respectable. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think it's that uh, at a time like that, bringing people out of the studio um, and into these locations got uh, more naturalistic performances out of uh, as as great as Bogart and Hepburn are mm-hmm. the naturalism wasn't really their thing it was right. sort of a thing you know sign of the times or however you want to phrase it yeah uh that they were always kind of larger than life a little bit and this this was one of their more just everything about the movie just feels very naturalistic almost if it were made today obviously it would be made you know handheld yeah yeah you, you know um uh, with you know with, with with using all natural light but mm-hmm. uh it's it, I I like it for those reasons and because it just sort of it's a milestone I think in terms of uh, semi independent filmmaking. I think what I don't care for about it is is the general sense of it 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 tries to be both serious and also fun and like an adventure, uh, but it kicks off with like uh, one of the characters uh, you, know, you know one of the main characters dying not one of those two of course but uh, and it's. Everything they're doing is very serious, but it treats it with such a sense of of fun, which can be exciting. Except for mm-hmm. me, it just it took me out of it. Uh, I understand 
all the reasons you why prefer six days seven nights i do and en- you know what i do enjoy that that's a joke of course <laughs> i i don't it is awful all right <laughs> one more um at i don't know topher i don't know is it topher grace it's not it's not spelled like that it's okay. t-o-e-f-e-r uh asks does watching a movie in parts watch the first half tonight second half tomorrow ruin the movie um, I don't think ruin is the right word. It definitely changes the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it takes, um, a skilled moviegoer to make it work. Um, but it's still never as good as watching it all in one go without breaks or anything. That's obviously, obviously the purest form of watching a movie is watching it from beginning to end without stopping. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I, I think watching a movie in parts is going you get probably going to end up having more of an intellectual response to it than an emotional one which is okay with me cuz that's how I often respond to films mm-hmm. except for when I cry at Toy Story 3 like just 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 racked with sobs like literally trying to hold back so as not to embarrass my girlfriend <laughs> because I it was if I had been alone in a room watching Toy Story 3 uh it just would I just would have I would have broken all the windows with all my uh, just bellowing sobs is that is that like a? Uh, never mind. No, I'm just um, saying that's how loud it would have been. Oh, okay, fair enough. I, I don't um, have to go to. I don't have to like pull in, like reach into a bag of cliches or or or, or well worn phrases. I can coin my own. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I, I. You should commit to it and just stay out, please. <laughs> uh, I like that. For me, uh, yeah, I would actually. I I agree wholeheartedly that when you watch it in parts, uh, it becomes a an academic and an intellectual experience. Uh, which you can still enjoy it on that level, but films, I think by their very nature, are an immersive experience. And if you watch an hour and then stop it and then go and do it, you know, go to the gym uh, and then come back, uh, you're not, I, I'd venture to say you, you're not really immersed in that experience. And so, um, so I think, I think you can still, it can still be satis- uh, a satisfying experience, but not, again, it's, as David said, it's not how they're meant to be viewed. So um, if you have the opportunity to watch a movie in one sitting, uh, I'd say do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. Thanks for your questions. Uh, And uh, yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.